God bless you this afternoon. Uh, this uh, Pastor Larry from Bethel Temple in Rosemead, California. Once again to come and just worship the Lord on this beautiful Sunday the Lord has given us. And we come here to just let God just touch your hearts and move in your lives no matter where you're at and what you're going through, maybe in the car or home or wherever you're at. But I pray that uh, this service today will touch you by the songs, by the word that will come and uh, we prepared for it. I, I want to open up with a, a chapter here, Psalms 121. It says that I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Where does our help come from? In verse 2 it says, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your feet slip. He will watch over you all will... He will watch, he will watch us over you will not slumber. Amen. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shield and your right and your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Amen. He will watch over your life and what he's doing right now. The Lord will watch over the, your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Father, we pray, touch someone, touch our lives. Speak to us today, Lord. Lift that heart, God. Truly, Lord, no harm should come to us, Lord. You're watching over us, Lord God. And we look up to the hills where it's where our help comes for, yes. from you, Lord. And it comes from you yes. that made the heavens and the earth. I thank you for this evening, this afternoon. I thank you for this service, Lord. And I pray, God, they can sing with us and praise the Lord with us. And you speak to us in Jesus' name. As the worship team continues to praise his name, God bless you.
song says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And for the third time, blessed be the yes. name of the Lord. Yes. And we run to the high tower. He's a strong tower. Yes. And we run to him for his protection, for his guidance. Sister Rachel. I thank the Lord first of all for the salvation of my soul. <coughs> There's a songwriter that wrote this song. to meet him a long time ago as I was a young teen and he had already was already serving the Lord's name. I don't know you might know him. His Andre Crouch. And Andre wrote 
quite a few songs. Thank the Lord for this one. I had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There were times I didn't know right from wrong. But in
this week that I heard a song that I haven't sang. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of the first songs I ever sang in my life. And that was, he's got the whole world in his hand. Mm -hmm. As they were singing on, on uh, Facebook and, and everybody was singing it their way and their style, it just hit me again. I said, I haven't sang that and when I was just a young man about three years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 I, and as she was singing right now, it threw it on, reminding me of the old school songs of, of those that you can hear the words and what it meant. I, I thank the Lord for those songs that continue to touch and are still powerful today. But I'm going to just throw that in there. It wasn't planned and, and uh, just felt like uh, maybe this will uplift your soul right now where you're at. He's got the whole world in his hand no matter what we're at, where we're at and what condition we're at and, and wherever you're at. And if you know the song, sing it along with me. And uh, it's not, I don't have that greatest voice, but I like to sing it with all my heart. It was very, one of the very first songs when I was a young man. used to sing it all over. excited about it. It's not going to, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Praise God. And matter of fact, uh, where can you go? <laughs> Everything's shut down anyway, right? So now that I got you as a captive audience, we're going to just go into the word. I pray, Lord, that you will use me today to speak to somebody, Lord, 
that knows you and somebody that doesn't know you, Lord, that today they will turn their lives over to you. In Jesus' name I ask you, Lord. Amen. I praise God because he is answering prayer and he's always with us. The title of the lesson is, or the message is, Feeling Hopeless. Feeling Hopeless. People disappoint us. Circumstances cause us pain. And our own limitations lead us to frustration. Some of us are going through that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you are in that place, but I'm pretty sure we're feeling like God has forgotten us. Mm -hmm. Feeling frustrated with the situation we're in. Wanting to go to work. Wanting to go to school. Wanting to go back to doing many other things see, that you used to do. That you took it for granted. And now we're limited. And some of us are getting frustrated. I have all my fishing gear ready. Man, I look at it over every day. And I pray, God, please answer our prayer. I need to go fishing. I need to go fishing. So I'm praying that one of these days I'll hear it in the news that all the lakes are open again mm -hmm. and we can go fishing, praise God. Anyway, we're still five to six feet apart <laughs> and those fish don't know the virus anyway. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I thank the Lord because, praise God, we can get frustrated because we're there in our houses and those with their children that have one can you imagine, you can't handle one. Can you imagine the one with two? Mm -hmm. The one with three? Mm -hmm. The one with four? But one, almost like having a dozen anyway, right? Amen. My daughter says amen. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples, Jesus told his disciples, the struggles are part of this life. He told his disciples, I'm going to let you know, Struggles are part of this life. I don't know anyone that can say that no matter since you were young to where you're at right now, that you have not struggled in life, no matter what it is in your job, at home, at school. I'm going to tell you, those that were going, when I went to school, man, I struggled all the 12 grades. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yep. Thank God I wasn't required to go to college. Amen. <laughs> but I struggled all the 12 grades, and thank God in my time they passed me. Praise the Lord. But you know, I pray that even as I went out for my first job and things, I struggled and I was saying, I don't know if I can do this. But yet God was with us. But life is full of struggles. Come on, somebody say amen with me. Amen. In John 16, 33, I have told, this is what Jesus said, I have told you all these things so that you will have peace of heart and mind. Here on this earth, you will have many trials and sorrow. Come on, say many trials and sorrows. Amen. Uh, I, I, I really can hear you. Say it again. Many trials and sorrows. Yes, amen. He said we're going to have many trials and sorrows. On this earth. But, I like the next part, it says, but cheer up. Amen. Tell your neighbor, cheer up. Oh, yeah. Cheer up. For I have overcome the world. He was telling the disciples what was happening and what they were going to go through. But he also said, Brother John, cheer up. Yeah. And you out there, my sister Kathy and Texas, cheer up. So I'm going to let you know, tell them the one sitting next to you again in the couch, cheer up. Because God has overcome the world. Come on, somebody help me preach today. Hannah couldn't have a baby. A long, the longer she waited, the more her hopes disappeared and sorrow and bitterness took hold of her. Expecting a child, expecting a child, and the years passed by. So bitterness grew in her life. But in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10, she was in deep anguish and was crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. It wasn't just a prayer. It says here she was in anguish 
and crying bitterly as she prayed unto the Lord. In other words, she was crying unto the Lord. God, you promised. And when am I going to have a baby? And God, when is this going to happen? And they're making fun of me. They're because I have not born a child. Lord, oh Lord. And she's begging and crying unto him. And that was once. That was one incident. I have three. Paul was caught up in a violent storm against his advice. Listen real good. Against his advice, the captain and the crew set sail, endangering him and everyone aboard. After efforts to save the vessel, those on board had to swim ashore to survive. And you find that in Acts 27, verse 10 and 11. Now listen real good. In verse 10 he said, Sirs, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead if you go on. Perhaps the ship will wreck, shipwreck, lose your cargo, <coughs> injuries, or death. In other words, he was letting them know what he was already feeling in his heart or what God had showed him. Sounds like us sometimes, doesn't it? We don't listen to our pastor's advice. Come on. You can say amen or ouch. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> we, as the pastors, God has given us the, the how do you say, the spirit or the wisdom and to, to express and let you know what's ahead of your future. But sometimes you know more than the pastor. Because somebody else told you. But I am the good shepherd. Amen. And when you don't listen to my advice of the danger ahead, look what happened to them. Look at what it says here in verse 11. But the officers, kind of like us, the officers in charge of the prisoners listen more to the ship captain and the owner than Paul. Doesn't it happen to us sometimes we listen more to someone else than the one that is in charge or uh, is shepherding your life? I've shepherded so many people in my life and some of our, our praise God, they're, they're serving in other churches. But I tell you, there's a lot of them that are lost. Some of them that are not going to church anymore. They did not listen to the counsel of the pastor of the church. And they're lost. They're out there searching and lost in this world. If they would have only listened to the word, listened to the gospel, listened to the advice, just like they would have listened to Paul. Look at another one. A jealous Saul pursued David throughout the land and tried to kill him. In Psalms 13, 1, David wondered if God had forgotten him. Can you imagine that Saul was trying to kill him? So David was running for his life. And then in verse 1 it says there, look, look at what it says in verse 1. David said, how long will you forget me? He's telling the Lord that. How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever? How long will you look the other way? When I'm in need. Wow. I read that and I'm going like, that sounds like us right now. How long would you forget us, Lord? Are you looking the other way? <clears throat> and we're in need today. Doesn't it seem like that? We're praying and we're asking God, help us, Lord. Get me out of this situation. Look at my need. And it looks like he's looking the other way. But I'm going to tell you something. How many of us are saying the same thing right now? Amen? Or ouch? What did these people do? I'm going to tell you what these three people do. Are you listening? I'm going to tell you what these people, three people did. They prayed. Mm -hmm. Come on, tell your neighbor. They prayed. Come on, somebody. They prayed. 
I used to always hear a, a pastor and now with the Lord, he always say, come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably saying that up in heaven with the angels. Come on, somebody. And you know who he is. We need to pray. We need to pray. But I'm going to let you know something. How did they pray? See, there's a difference. When we're not really in need and we, we come and pray, it's not the same like when you're in need when you pray. Is that true or not? That's true. Sure. And Hannah, Hannah, cried out to God and asked him to give her a son. <clears throat> what did she say? She cried out to God. It wasn't just another prayer. She cried out to God to give her a son. Her hope returned because she trusted in him for her future. You understand? Crying out to God. Have you ever cried out to God? They should be people today. If you really need God in your life and you want an answer, are you praying like Hannah prayed? Mm -hmm. Crying out to God. Are we praying and saying, oh, Lord, with all our heart and tears, say, God, hear me now. Don't wait till that relatives in, in the hospital. Don't wait till you're out of food to cry out. Right now is the time to cry out to God. Let him hear your prayer. Put that trust back in him and for your future. Go to the second one. I'm almost ending here. Go to the second one. Paul witnessed. Paul witnessed to the hopeless soldiers and told them to have courage because God will deliver them. Can you imagine? They did not accept his advice. They were ship, shipwrecked. They had to swim because a vessel was breaking apart and they swam for their they swam for their lives. And here pa Paul still told them to have courage. I'm going to let you know, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're facing in life, no matter what circumstance you're going through, only you know what you're feeling right now. I'm going to let you know, have courage. Yes. Have courage yes. and trust in God. Yes. Amen. This is what we go through. Don't you think the pastors are going through some things right now, trying to hold on to their sheep, trying to keep them encouraged, trying to keep them focused, trying to keep them committed to him. You know, I pray that this, hallelujah, the word will come to help you to have courage. Yes. And to courage every pastor that I see. I see uh, the pastors that I know personally, and I see them on, on live stream, and I see them trying to do their very best to get the word out and still preaching the gospel. That has not stopped, but it has given us courage yes. to cheer up yes. and press on. Come on, somebody, because I know the future, what God has given us. Yes. Are you with me today? Amen. The last one says here that David, David didn't dwell on his circumstances. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? David didn't dwell on his circumstances. Mm -hmm. Some of us are dwelling too much on our circumstances. Yes. Matter of fact, when you talk to somebody, you say, oh, me, oh, poor me. And, oh, you don't look, like, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm going to tell you I do because I'm locked up just like you. Mm -hmm. I, I can't go to my, out of my yard just like you. Matter of fact, I know every corner of my house real good now. <laughs> and matter of fact, uh, I'm doing things I've never done before. Cleaning my old stuff up. <laughs> and maybe you need to clean some of that old stuff up too. Mm -hmm. But quit dwelling on their circumstances. So you, you're running a little short on age. Remember the story of the fish and the bread. God answered. He doesn't leave us alone. I praise, I praise God because no matter what, uh, if you got one steak, then cut it up and you can make two pieces of steak. Whatever it is, don't dwell. So many people, we call them up and all they talk about, poor me, poor me, you don't know what I'm going through. Yes, we all know what we're going through. We are in the same circumstance, right? But don't dwell on it. David didn't. He could have been hiding over there, going to try to kill me. Hide here, hide there. No, oh, he's going to cry. No. But he instead, he focused on God's unfailing love. Yes. That's what we need to do. 
We need to focus on God's unfailing love. How many out there need to trust God once again and focus on his unfailing love? This little last part here says, time with God. Listen real good to this. Listen real good to this. Time with God will come back, come back. Hopelessness will fight hopelessness. It moves our attention. Listen real good. Listen. It moves our attention from the circumstance to the Father's great love for us. That's what it does. Because when we take our eyes off the circumstance, you begin to lift him up and praise his name and give him honor and glory. Then you start counting the blessings you have. The blessing you have, you're not in the hospital. Come on, somebody. Look at how many thousands have already died. Look at how many are affected. How many are in the hospital? And you that need operations are not even accepting you right now because of the virus. But listen, listen. Trust in God. You're there. You're able to still uh, trust in Him for your future. Yes. Circumstances that we're going in. Turn your eyes to Jesus. Focus on Him. Just like these three stories I told you today. Each one prayed. They prayed from the bottom of their heart. And today I pray that today's message of encouragement for those that are feeling hopeless, I pray by the end of this message and by the end of this service that you will know you're not alone anymore. That God is with you. All you got to do is trust God. Amen. I'm going to pray for you right now. I prayed yesterday for a man that is just about to go to heaven. I could not see him. So they put me on the phone, on a speaker phone, to his bedside. This man was my, is my neighbor, and he's my neighbor for over 50 years, or four, no, about 30 years, about 30 years. He's been there since 1972. And, uh, you know, I, he moved, and his daughter lives in that house now, and he'd come by and say hello to me as he worked in his yard and fixed some of the things, and, and I had to speak to him yesterday, he was, they had to wake him up from the sleep he was in, and I said, I really couldn't hear him speak, and he couldn't hear it clear, but I said, if, I told the family there on the phone, if, if he hears my voice to squeeze it, to him to squeeze her hand, and he started sounding like he wanted to speak. And he was squeezing their hand, they were telling me. She said the family was surrounded him right now at that moment yesterday. I began to pray, and I prayed that God will, his will be done in his life. God, you're the miracle worker. You touch his life or give him the peace of mind in his heart that you, Lord, will come into his life. You know, when I finished that prayer, Everyone in that room, I heard say amen. And they told me before they told me goodbye, they said, Pastor Larry, he began to move and tried to speak like he moved more than he ever moved in these days. I don't know how he is today or the Lord has taken him or not. But I pray that God does a miracle or God gives him the peace in knowing that he knows the Savior. We said the sinner's prayer. And only God knows that. I'm going to pray with you right now out there. Because all you need is Jesus. Maybe you've gone astray. Maybe you haven't taken things serious. These people, these, these, people, these three stories I gave you, they cried out to God. Their attitude changed. And they trusted in the Savior. I'm asking you to trust in your Savior. I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting that that answer comes soon. Yes, things would not be the same. They're going to be different. But we're not going to be worried about that circumstance. We're going to shout victory anyway. Because God knows your future. And he knows my future. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to kneel down. But if you want to, you can. If you want to join your family's hands right there, just join hands. You that are hearing me right
right now, my voice, I'm going to pray for you right now. I pray that I know every seed that I threw out there will not come back void. I pray that it fall on good ground. Feeling hopeless, you don't need to feel hopeless anymore. We gave you the remedy right now. It's the word of God. Take it, eat it, digest it in your system. Let God give you that hope. Father, I come right now. I ask you for every life that has heard this message. God, that you will touch them out there, God. I might not know them personally. I might not ever meet them in my life, God. But you know each one that you created. You know their condition and their circumstance right now, God. Maybe right now they're crying out to you, Lord, like Hannah, Lord, God. Maybe, Lord, we need to take the advice like the Paul gave that advice, Lord, that we need to learn to take that advice from that shepherd, God. Maybe we need to know that we need to not dwell on our circumstance like David and trust you, God, that you're in control. I pray for those that don't know you today, God. That we're not going to ever lose that opportunity to, to share that with someone, God, that needs you as our personal Savior. And all they have to do is repeat after me. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you, God. And I pray, God, that you have died on the cross and shed your blood for my sins. I give my life to you, Lord God. I'm giving my heart to you, Lord God. I'm going to turn it all to you right now, God. I tried everything else, Lord, and it has not worked. I pray that you break the habit of drinking, the habit of drugs. God, I pray that you break those chains right now, God. I pray that you come into those homes right now and help them, Lord, and bring peace, Lord, where there's no peace, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will reach them, God, in Jesus' name. Save their soul right now as they say with me, God, I give my heart to you. And I believe that you died on the cross and you shed your blood for my sins. And I thank you, Lord, for that salvation. You that need healing, stretch your hand forward with me. Touch them right now, God. Touch them, touch their bodies, wherever the pain is right now. Touch them in the name of Jesus, God. Those that are, that are full of anxiety, Lord, and nervous, and don't just don't know what to do, Lord, doesn't, don't have peace of mind. You said, it, that, Lord, that you are the one that overcame, and you give us peace of mind on this earth. Give them the peace they need, Lord, because all they need is you, Lord. I pray that you touch them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's give him a praise right now. Let's thank him right now. Yes, sing it now. Lift your hands where you're at. Yes. Honor, cry it out to God. Cry it out to God and you cry. He's all you need right now. Lift your hand to heaven right now. Father, I pray right now. You're all I need, God. Jesus. You can say it to me. Say Jesus. Jesus. Share it with someone. Share it with someone. 
share this video with someone and tell them about it. We'll be on Wednesday night again in our prayer that God will continue to answer. Next Sunday, I want to invite you for next Sunday, Pastor Leon, uh, Pastor Leon Martinez will be speaking on next Sunday afternoon. God bless you as they sing again. Amen. Praise God. Take up your